I have something I want, would like to read. My phone's down to about 10%. How, uh, Psalm, 80, uh, Psalm 84, 1 through 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts for the Lord of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even a sparrow finds a home and a swallow a nest for herself. I'll finish the rest in a minute. You ever notice how uh, God uh, has made, given instincts to the, the birds of the, of the air and whatnot? Like the, uh, even the ducks and the geese as they're flying south this time of year. Did anybody ever notice why in a V for ducks, one side's longer than the other? It's almost always that way. Yeah, there's more ducks on one side than the other. <laughs> Back to serious stuff. Oh. So, uh, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house forever, singing your praise. Selah. And then we have some announcements. We have lots of opportunities for you to get plugged in here at LBC. Sunday school classes started today, and we have classes for all ages from preschool through adult, and our life groups will start on Tuesday with one at Matt's, Mott's, <laughs> Mott's in Lindenville, one at Bessettes in Waterford, both at 6 p.m. and another group meeting here at 6.30 p.m. And ladies, there are two groups beginning this week for Bible studies. Sarah Warner is leading, yay, is leading a group here on Mondays, the second and the fourth Monday of the month, starting tomorrow, 9.30 here at LBC. And child care will be provided, so we encourage the moms to come out for that. And Christy is leading a ladies' Bible study, which begins on Saturday, 9 o'clock, also here at Linden Bible. And they were going through the drive through history series, Ends of the Earth, which chronicles the spread of Christianity throughout the world. If you're looking for a fun day trip with your kids, the River of Life Camp in Irisburg has their corn maze ready. Send your kids in and see how long it takes for them to get out. <laughs> <laughs> they also offer horse and carriage rides. Um, someone mentioned this morning that when they came in the driveway, they noticed how beautiful the flower bed looks mm -hmm. out by the sign by the road and um, that is the work of Priscilla Manker. Thank you Priscilla, it is beautiful. Thanks so much. Um, and looking forward to the skin the schedule, the Futures Pregnancy Care Fundraiser Banquet will be held October 21st at Union Baptist Church. Uh, but you need to sign up for that by September 21st. So you're running out of time if you want to get to that. There is more information in your bulletin and also out on the bulletin board. Okay, so if you notice the back table with the shoe boxes on it, uh, we do it, we've been doing it 11 years now where um, we are collecting items for shoe boxes for needing ch needy children around the world. We will be starting up our videos next Sunday, but um, if you have, uh, Anything, you, you can do it two ways. You can take a box home and fill your own box, take a pamphlet in front of those shoe boxes back there and explains what to do. Um, or you can just bring um, items for shoe boxes for our church packing party, which will be in November. And this month we are showcasing the toiletry collections and there's a list of what to bring back there. Super. Um, this week I've been just in awe of the goodness of God, um, just being reminded in the middle of all of the squeezing things that happen in our life, um, God's hand, his presence is with us. And it's amazing, even from being tired and, and driving the wrong direction, but then getting a blessing in the middle of it um, is a gift from the Lord. Would you stand and join us? 
as we remember that we can be confident because we can see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Oh Lord, you're my shepherd. You make me lie in fields of green. You lead me by the still water. For you are with me, and you comfort me. still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father.
faithfulness. Morning by morning, to mercies I sing. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and spring. everybody who was able to attend Sunday school enjoyed the first day and if you missed Sunday school um, feel free to come next week um, today I'd like to remember these folks in our prayers today um, John and Priscilla Manicker's daughter Sarah Perkins is expecting a baby any moment and we also have Rebecca Burke um, who many of you know who is also expecting very soon and then we have a, a friend of Priscilla, Vanessa Aguilera, um, who is also having a baby really soon. So, and then I, I have an old college friend, um, Michael Babbitt, who um, unexpectedly lost his mother um, two days ago. So keep, keep him in, it, in your prayers, please. I'm going to share a verse today about God being in control. It's Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
And um, let us pray. Lord, be with us today as we gather to hear your word. Be with Pastor Joel as he gives the, the message today. And help us stay focused on you today and this upcoming week. Remind us that you are in control and that we need to look to you often in our daily life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome to fall at Linden Bible Church. <laughs> You all remembered, and you got here, and uh, that's awesome. <laughs> we will allow those involved in Children's Church the opportunity to be dismissed. Um, there's one other announcement they asked me to make, um, and uh, it has to do with a an upcoming conference we're going to have. Um, we have a bunch of brochures. I believe they're on the back, and they're certainly on the table, on the welcome table. Hey, parents, let's talk. Um, and it's a conference on gender identity and sexuality. Um, as you know, we're facing a lot of those issues uh, in, in our world today. And um, one of our missionaries, Gary Len, um, who with his wife and family were many years uh, missionaries to Papua New Guinea with Wycliffe, um, came off the field some years back um, because the Lord was uh, leading him to start a ministry to... Um, on these issues and to these folks. Um, Gary is uh, an incredible guy. He's one of our former deacons and uh, was a, such a blessing to us here. Um, he also has a, a great ability to put biblical truth uh, married to compassion and love. And, um, and uh, so I think you will find it very balanced and helpful. Um, we're going to have a series of meetings um, on uh, Friday night, the 7th, October 7th, uh, we'll have a time here for youth and young adults and, and parents or anybody can come to any session, um, but that's going to be specifically directed towards them. Um, and then um, on the following Saturday, on the 8th, um, we'll have a, a session here, uh, just a little more extended for parents. Um, and he encouraged us, even parents of young children, because our kids are getting hit with this very early in, in schools and in our culture. Um, and uh, he'll have lots of resources to give you and uh, time to answer questions. Uh, and then he'll be with us here on Sunday. He'll do, take the adult Sunday school class. And uh, so I really encourage you. We're opening uh, Friday and Saturday up to... Um, to uh, other churches as well, so we expect to have others here. Um, it's just such a crucial, pressing issue, and Gary does such a great job with it. So we're very excited uh, for him to come and, and help us um, address those issues from a, a biblical and loving standpoint, and uh, I hope you'll consider uh, coming as I, I'm looking forward to, to doing as well. Um, uh, and we're going to switch back. Um, you know, I'm a little bit self-conscious today. I have to tell you, ever since, I didn't see it for a couple of weeks. Um, so I really haven't been in the pulpit since I viewed it. But ever since I saw Ken's video, and he just nailed all of us as speakers. And I thought, I do grip the pulpit. And do I shout that much? <laughs> I know I like the challenge, it's just part of my personality, but I was like, wow, and then, and then I thought, I'm going to deliberately go from side to side today so I look like Fred, you know, and tell you and be right on the edge, and I'm thinking, is he going to fall off, you know, <laughs> and uh, he, he really had us down, so Kenny, <laughs> now I'm self-conscious about how I, I look up here, <laughs> so, so I'm just dealing with that today, so I hope you'll excuse me. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm remembering one, one other thing. I'm supposed to, uh, there's some button down, red button? Okay, red button, hold it down. I think that's on. That's the backup mic, uh, just in case. So, um, and, uh, you know, I was thinking as the shears were here um, last Sunday and, and Brian blessed us with uh, the message and, and Joan and Brian with the music, um, you know, one of the things that I, I will miss seeing so much of Brian in particular is that he has a habit um, 
I think every time I've ever gotten together with him, uh, whenever somebody talks about something good that's happened, he always responds, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Uh, and, and that, I can't think of that phrase without thinking him, uh, of Brian, you know, bless the Lord, you know. Uh, yeah, we got here on time, bless the Lord, you know. And he, he just has a way of repeating that. And, and that is such an incredibly powerful thing for us to have on the tip of our tongues uh, in gratitude to the Lord. Um, you know, we always think of, of God blessing us, you know, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord. But isn't it incredible that we can bless the Lord? I mean, the God of the universe, the creator, the eternal one, all of this, that we get to bless the Lord because of all that he's done for us. And, and I want to do that today. And uh, I'm a little bit on steroids today. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm too excited. Maybe I'll try and go side by side. Um, we, uh, we have had, Christy and I, uh, the privilege of an incredible uh, week of worship. Uh, we went to a pastor's encouragement retreat uh, early this week, and, um, and the worship leader there, um, I, I never can remember his name because my kids called him Chucky because uh, he was the worship leader at Liberty when, when they were there, but um, Charles, whatever his name is, <laughs> uh, he, he's a worship leader at Thomas Road Baptist Church and, and teaches at Liberty, and um, and he is such a passionate worshiper and knows how to draw people into worship. And, uh, and he, I mean, this is a group of Baptists, okay? And he's got them raising their hands. And, and I, I saw some dancing. And he'll be up on the stage and he'll, he'll get carried away. It is so great. And you get 250 pastors and wives who are, who are laying their lives on the, Lord, uh, on the line for the Lord in ministry. And you encourage them. And you call them to worship. And I want to tell you, it is something to worship with them. And it, it is so awesome. So we, we're coming off from that and messages of encouragement. And then last night here, you know, we had the Noel family and the place was, was, was filled. And, and, and they did an incredible job of, of bringing another style of worship to us. And then, and then we get... We, we get so used to it, we take it for granted, but every Sunday we get to continue with, with all of these guys, and it was great to hear your bass voice on that one. <laughs> uh, so I, I just, you know, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm filled with um, the worship of the Lord this week, and, uh, and you know, it's funny that um, in the midst of, of stuff, you know, I mean, we, we all have circumstances in life, uh, it was one of the three stooges, I can't remember which one you guys will remember, that, that uttered that famous line, I'm a victim of circumstances <laughs> at Curly. <laughs> and, uh, and I always think of that because, you know, we can be whiners or we can be worshipers. And sometimes if we get self-focused, thinking about ourselves, thinking about what's wrong, um, we, we can become the victim of our circumstances, so to speak. And, um, and sometimes, and I want to tell you a great antidote to that, when we're feeling like the circumstances are overwhelming us in life, we, we, need, to, we need to bless the Lord. We need to get our eyes up on the Lord. And, and it's amazing to me, in the midst of some circumstances in my life this week, how that worship just lifted me right out of that. Um, to, to a focus on the Lord. So I'm going to invite you to turn to Psalm 103 tonight. Um, tonight, today. I can't get anything right lately. I, I, you're just going to have to excuse me. I, I don't know. Um, our, the the Bessette's life group, I'm leading that at the Bessette's house, not, not Fred. <laughs> and, and Fred's leading the one at the, the mats, the mots. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, I got that wrong again, uh, so sorry about that, um, but, you know, usually, you know, Sue catches all those things and corrects them. Uh, we affectionately call her around here the governess of the universe, um, and, uh, and uh, so I guess once in a while they slip by. Um, but Psalm 103 is a, a great psalm of blessing to the Lord, um, and, uh, and in this psalm, 
uh, there is a structure to this psalm. And I just want to take you kind of through the structure first so, so we won't miss it. Um, it, it. It is a call to praise, and it begins with a, a, per, a call to, to uh, a praise, a personal call to passionate worship. I call it, uh, in verses 1 and 2. So, so it's a call to praise, but it's a, very, it's a call to very personal, passionate worship of the Lord in verses 1 and 2. And then in verses 3 through 5, it's a celebration of personal benefits received or blessings. We're going to interchange those words uh, today. Um, the blessings or the benefits that I have received from the Lord, and, and, it's, a, and it's a blessing of the Lord for those things. And then in verses 6 through 19, it's a celebration of corporate benefits or, or blessings received from the Lord. So this long section, um, and, and it's interesting, it's written in a very symmetrical and, and structural way, very beautiful structure to this psalm. There's, there's in verse 6, a general character of God's reign. And then there are six couplets, uh, verses, uh, that celebrate God's benefits to his people in verses 7 through 18. And then it caps that again with another general characteristic of God's reign in verse 19. So, so that kind of um, begins and ends that section. And then, uh, and then in verses uh, 20 through 22, a call to universal praise. So there's a beautiful structure to this psalm that you know, I just don't want you to miss and, and to have an appreciation for. Um, and, it, and it begins in verses uh, 1 and 2 with what I call a personal call to passionate praise. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. You know, the psalmist here, David, exhorts himself to bless the Lord. Um, and how do we do that? Well, we praise His name. We give thanks to Him. We express gratitude for who He is and for, for what He's done, uh, done for us. And He says this in terms, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And then he, he, he reiterates that by saying, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. That's a Hebrew way of saying uh, every bit of me, all of me, my whole being needs to bless the Lord. So he's calling us on us with our whole being, with every part of ourselves, to bless the Lord. This isn't a call to half-hearted worship or praise. It isn't a call to external worship. You know, I'll go through the motions. Great is thy faithfulness, you know. It's a, it's a self-exhortation to wholehearted, whole being, passionate praise. Uh -huh to use every part of our being, body, soul, and spirit, to praise the Lord, to bring praise to Him. You know, I was a couple of times tempted. Christy was grabbing me last night because I was getting so excited by all this blessing and worship we were doing that, you know, I started to dance a little. <laughs> uh, she, she thinks she was going to be embarrassed about that. So, uh, so I had to keep it under control. <laughs> but, you know... We should be dancing before the Lord. We should be praising the Lord. We should be singing hallelujah, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and what are we praising? What are we praising? We're praising the Lord or Yahweh. I mean, this is the, the personal God of Israel, the covenant-keeping God of Israel, the, the God who came to Israel and said, this is my name <laughs> at the burning bush. It is, I am who I am, the self-existent, eternal God, but I'm your God, Israel. I, I'm your God who, who makes covenants with you. I'm, I'm your God who loves you. Uh, this is the personal God of Israel that, is being, that we're praising here. And it says, praise his holy name. That's his character. That's who he is. That's what he has revealed about himself. So this is passionate praise, all of me worshiping all of who he is. And it's a call for us to worship the Lord, to bless the Lord in that way. So I won't shout, but I'm going to challenge us today. How passionate is our praise? Is our praise when we come together perfunctory or is it passionate? Oh. How much of me is really engaged when I come to worship the Lord? Part of me? Just my lips, you know, my mind's somewhere else. 
or all of me. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say, let loose and praise the Lord with every part of your being. Don't be embarrassed about that. Forget about what, other, what you look like or what other people think or what your past is. You know, in your own way and with your own personality, praise the Lord with everything that you've got because uh, it will change you. And it's what we are called to do. God put us here on earth. He created us. He created the world. He did all that he did. Why? So that we could return it in worship and gratitude to him. So let's, let's do what we were created to do. And we'll get blessed in the process. Um, there is sometimes a problem when it comes to, to praising the Lord. And that's in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He repeats it again. And forget not all his benefits. You know, he, he says there, there's a, a problem that can enter in, that can, an obstacle to us blessing the Lord wholeheartedly and passionately. And it's forgetfulness. We can forget. We can take for granted who God is and what he's done for me. You know, we can just be going through life and, um, and forget all that God has done, through, that God saved us. You know, by, by his son on the cross, he died, he gave us his son, he died for us, you know, he loves us, he, he brought us out of sin and, and the slave market of sin and, and into the kingdom of his dear beloved son, and then he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus, did you catch that? Read about him in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and following. Every spiritual blessing has already been given to us in Christ. Oh. And I think one of the greatest instigators of ingratitude is forgetfulness. Sometimes, and there's a little bit of a hint in the text that this is kind of deliberate, you know. Um, there's some Old Testament passages that spoke about they forgot God, you know because they were, they were focused on other things or false teaching or whatever. Um, you know, do we just accept blessing after blessing after blessing from God and never take time to thank him? You know, the words of Jesus echo in my mind, where are the nine? <laughs> Let's be the one that goes back and gives gratitude to God. Uh, There's a funny story told in... in uh, in her book on gratitude about, you know, the guy who um, is way down one day and, and uh, he's kind of grumpy and complaining and his friend says, what's the matter? And he said, well, you know, you know, like a week, ago, two weeks ago, I, I got this inheritance of $40,000. And he said, really? He said, and he said, yeah. And then last week I, I, I got to not, I got another inheritance. It was, it was $15,000. He's like, well, What's the matter? You, you, got, you got blessed with these two inheritances. And he says, this week, nothing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we can do that. We can so live on what's happening today. We forget all of what God has done for us. You know, let's not do that. Let's remember God's goodness to us. Um, you know, in her book, again, on uh, choosing gratitude, she writes the, a definition of gratitude, which I like. A Christian gratitude is recognizing and expressing appreciation for the benefits we have received from God and others. I'll say that again. Christian gratitude is recognizing and expressing appreciation for the benefits we have received from God and others. So I want to challenge us today uh, to remember all that God has done for us. And, and what does he say to remember all his benefits? Um, you know, I think of that old hymn, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what, it, what uh, the Lord has done. I, I wrote down, I had it here. Uh, yeah, when, when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. You know, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. And, you know, there's four verses to it. I won't go through them all. But, you know, sometimes that's a healthy habit to count our blessings. Uh, I try and make a habit of that every day to think of, 
start my day with five things that God has, has that I'm thankful for. And, and here's some blessings. It's the spiritual blessings, all those blessings in, uh, that we've received. Ephesians, again, chapter one. The relational blessings, family, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, neighbors, people who serve us, teachers, clerks. Uh, you know, we could go on. Material blessings. You know, when's the last time we thank God that we have food, three meals a day, we have a home to live in, we have clothing, you know, we have heat, we have jobs, electricity, furniture, cars, pets, computers, internet, sometimes that's not a blessing, uh, warm showers, refrigerators, furnaces, you know, uh, we, we have a lot that we just take for granted every day. Uh, we're all going to go out and get in a car and go home. You know, we get, we get cars, you know. Uh, Sometimes I, I do big game, and some days I do small ball in my gratitude, you know. And I try and think of the little things that I would never think to, to, um, to give thanks for, like this water. Um, where would we be without that? And the cup that contains it, you know. Uh, my toothbrush, you know. We lost our luggage on the way back. I have a new appreciation for my toothbrush. For underwear, <laughs> for deodorant, others had an appreciation for that after three days. <laughs> you know, it was amazing when we didn't suddenly have all this stuff for three days. We were waiting for Southwest to get it back to us, and praise God they found it and, and eventually got it to us. Um, but it was just a reminder. Oh, yeah, yeah, all those things, you know. I'm thankful for my razor, you know, <laughs> all this stuff, um, these things to be be grateful for and you know some of you may be uh so down you might think well i just can't think of anything to be grateful for um i once read this this is the the life stinks i changed the word this life stinks gratitude list um so if you can't think of anything else to be grateful for here i'll give you a few i'm grateful for anyone who makes me laugh i'm grateful that i'm not being executed in the morning i'm grateful i have skin on I'm grateful I can process my food without the use of externally fitted tubes. I'm grateful I'm not on fire. <laughs> and I'm grateful I can write this list. You know, they give more. But <laughs> you know, so if you have to wake up and say, oh, well, thanks, God, I'm not on fire today, we can be grateful for that. <laughs> we could always find things to be grateful for. Well, David moves on in this psalm to celebrating our personal blessings from God. Um, and these are a number of things. Uh, the first one, and these are, these are the biggies. Uh, forgiveness and healing in verse uh, 3. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Um, you know, we sang about God's pardoning. Uh, some versions use that word pardon uh, or, or forgiveness. That we were once lost in sin. We stood under the condemnation of God's wrath against sin. But Jesus, but God, who is rich in mercy, sent his son to take the penalty for our sin upon him, and he forgave us. And that forgiveness is free, that forgiveness is full, and that forgiveness is final. I mean, that's a lot to be grateful for. We can always be grateful for the cross and for the forgiveness, forgiveness that has brought to us. The forgiveness of all our iniquities, our gross injustices, our wickedness, uh, the, the, uh, the term uh, means. You know, our sin against God was great. We were, we were on death row. <laughs> and uh, and we were going we were, we were to face eternal punishment. We were going to be executed uh, eternally. And the pardon came down from God, paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? <laughs> we need not forget that. And then it says he heals all of our diseases. You know, God is a healing God. In the old covenant, he promised them that a day, uh, that if they were obedient to him, that, that none of the diseases of Egypt would be placed on them. Um, uh, the, all those things that he inflicted on the Egyptians. Um, you know, in the ministry of Jesus, what did he do time after time after time? He healed people. It, it was a picture into what the kingdom's going to be like. When, 
when, when we're going to all be totally healed, all of our diseases, whether they be physical ailments or, or whether they be spiritual ailments or emotional ailments, um, all of those things. Now, I know God, uh, this isn't a promise or a guarantee that God heals every disease or sickness in this life. Sometimes he uses those things to give us far better things. Um, but he is a healing God. And he can heal us when he chooses. I, I was reminded of that this, just this week. There was a great article in, um, in the Caledonia Record of all places. And, um, and it was about the New Hampshire Senate one race. Okay, And, and um, there's two candidates there. And one is a woman named Carrie Gendrow. And I wanted to re read you what they wrote about her. Faith is important to Gendrow. I hope I'm saying that right. She grew up in a religious household, was raised in a Baptist church, and at a very young age, at five or six years old, she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, she said. She's been active in multiple churches, taught Sunday school, and headed up religious missions to the Dominican Republic. Now 61, her belief has not wavered. In fact, it has grown stronger. The reason can be traced back to June 2001, when she had, was diagnosed with malignant cancer in both of her eyes. She underwent surgeries the following February and also September, and each time it returned aggressively. Her doctor offered a grim assessment of her situation. He said, Carrie, I can't keep digging this out. Eventually, you will completely lose your eyes. And if one cell of the cancer metastasizes, you're done, she recalled. Faced with that news, she requested a month to weigh her options. In that time, she wrote scripts and planned videos, which would be played for her daughter, Emily, then 11, at birthdays and during milestone moments. Jundrow's family also held a healing service at Linden Bible Church, which was officiated by Pastor Gil Soucy. Uh, some of you know that Gil Soucy was here. I think that was his dad. Um, it took place on October 16, 2002. After the intimate service, can, Gendrow returned to her doctor and received shocking information. The tumors were gone and the scar tissue had completely healed. The incident, she said, challenged and then reaffirmed her faith. I shouldn't even be alive, she said. It's an absolute miracle. <laughs> God can still heal anytime he chooses. Ah, we wish sometimes that every time he'd heal those things in me and others that we see and and he doesn't always choose to do that. Sometimes he uses those crises and that suffering to, to bring us more of himself and deeper into himself. Something better than we can see in the moment. But it doesn't mean that God can't heal. He can and he still does. So we can be thankful that we, we serve a healing God. Um, well, verses, uh, uh, where am I? Verse 4 talks about that God's rescue and reward. He says, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. You know, God redeems us literally from the pit of hell. <laughs> but he also redeems us from the pits, the adversities of this life. <laughs> you know, I think of so many Bible characters. <laughs> you know, Paul who served the Lord and went through so many things that were so difficult, so much suffering, yet he still said in 2 Timothy 3, 11 and 12 that he has rescued me out of all my troubles. Now, he went through a lot of them. You know, he got beat, he got stoned, he got shipwrecked. I mean, you name it, it happened to him. And yet his testimony at the end of his life was he rescued me out of all those troubles. Sometimes he had to go through them, but God still took him through. And then David, I mean, who wrote this psalm, God had rescued him from a lion, a bear, uh, a Goliath, King Saul, who was trying to kill him <laughs> half his life, uh, his enemies numerous times, his own army that turned against him. Um, you know, he knew what it was, was like to be rescued. I want to ask you, has there ever been a time in your life when God rescued you? Yes, he's done that spiritually for, for many of us. But maybe he's done that in other ways. You know, when you were down and out for the count, I don't know what it was. Uh, but I know there's times in my life when I can look back and I could say, I was in such a deep hole, I knew I couldn't save myself. And I knew I couldn't get myself out of that hole. But God rescued me. And I always go back to that. He can rescue us. 
no matter how deep the hole is. Because he is a rescuing God. And my one challenge to you is this. Did you thank him? Did you remember to keep thanking him every time you recall that event or that, that season in your life? And then it says, who crowns you with, with steadfast love and mercy. Not only does, does God de delight to redeem us from life's pits, he, he exalts us with his, his steadfast love, his chesed, loyal, steadfast love, his loving kindness, and his caring compassion. It says he crowns us. In other words, he's blessing us with that, with his love and his care. He understands our, our weaknesses. Do you know that God is as delighted with us as we are with him? <laughs> you know, he delights not only to rescue us, but to bless us with his steadfast love and his mercy or compassion. And then verse 5 says that he, he gives us satisfaction and vigor. Um, I'm just checking the clock here. <laughs> You know, who satisfies your years with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, I remember one of my mentors, a, probably the greatest professor I, I and many others ever had, said near the Howard Hendricks at the end of his life, he said, you're looking at a completely fulfilled human being. If I died today having produced some of the people God has given me the privilege of shaping, it will have been worth showing up on the planet. I can't say it like him. He was funny. Um, you know, he, he had a satisfaction that serving God had been worth it, that God is good, and that God had been good to him. And, you know, if you were in his class, he was, not, he was an old guy, but, man, he had a youthful spirit. He would get us roaring with laughter, and, and then he would, as he said, you know, you get their mouth open with laughter, and then you pour in the truth. <laughs> And he did that so effectively. You know, is there contentment and satisfaction in our life today? Oh, can we say, boy, God has satisfied my years with good. Maybe we need to recall the good, the good things. But it also says so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, this is one of God's blessings to his children. Um, you know, I, I love the old illustration about the pastor's wife that said, sometimes I wake up grumpy, and sometimes I let him sleep. <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> uh, that's a little close to the truth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, are we grumpy or are we filled with gratitude? Can I tell you something? There's no place for us as believers to be grumpy old men and complaining old women. There just is no place for that. There's no place for us to be whining instead of worshiping. I love Psalm uh, 92, verses 12 through 14. I think I... Well, I don't know. Here it is. I put it on another document, sorry. <laughs> uh Psalm 92, this is, one, this is my goal. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. And this is the part I like. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So God tells us as older folks to be sappy, uh, to be green with sap. <laughs> to have a youthful spirit about us. And I want to tell you, if you practice blessing the Lord and if you practice gratitude in your life, you will have a youthful spirit. Um, because God is going to renew that spirit like an eagle. You know, eagles, though they get very old, they still are powerful. They're still soaring up there. You know, Isaiah chapter 40. Um, so even as we age, um, we can thank God that our youth is renewed as eagles. Um, and then uh, he starts the third section in verse 6, uh, celebrating our corporate blessings. And, um, and he begins with kind of a, a general, um, 
kind of a, a general uh, character of God's reign in, in verse 6, and then he concludes it in verse 19, and then he's got these couplets in between. But in verse 6, he, uh, he names one of those things that's just true in general of God's reign here on earth. He says, uh, the, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Um, you know, here's the good news. Our God is a righteous judge. Um, we can thank God for that. Can I tell you something? He is going to make all things right one day because he is righteous and he is the one who is going to be the final judge in the end. I, can, I think of those words by Martin Luther King who experienced a, a lot of injustice, quoting uh, Amos 5.24, let justice roll down like waters God's, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. I will tell you something. Sometimes in this life there is not justice. Um, it's just a fact. Uh, sometimes wrong judgments are giving. Sometimes we don't get justice in this life. I, when we were out in Idaho, the pastor was preaching through um, Malachi, and uh, and it was that section in Malachi um, where where they were giving their complaints to the Lord, and they were saying basically their complaint is, you know, there's no justice here, God. You know, our enemies are they're worse than us, and and they're defeating us, and. And, and, you know, you know, where are you, you know? And, and the answer from God when we read that was, oh, justice is coming. <laughs> it will come one day. Righteous judgment will come in the end. When God's kingdom comes, and, and it's actually a, an eschatological, it's a messianic passage. When, 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 when Christ comes and his kingdom is established here on earth, justice will be done in the end and that taught me something as i listened i wrote this down last sunday oh, a couple sundays ago justice delayed is not always justice denied you know sometimes we feel like justice delayed if justice doesn't come then we've been denied justice but not in god's economy not in god's world justice delayed does not mean that justice will be denied because God is going to judge in the end. And we can be thankful for that. We see a lot of injustice uh, uh, today. And we can be thankful that God is a just uh, judge. And then he gives um, some, some other things that are corporate blessings. Um, I, I love verses 7 and 8. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You know, this is a quote from, from Exodus. You remember Exodus 33 and, and, and Moses is going before the Lord and, and, and he's really asking some deep things of God. And, and uh, you know, if you've shown your favor to us, you've got to go with us. Don't, don't abandon us on this walk through the wilderness. And, and you know, if, if, if I, you know, you say I have your favor or well, if you have your favor and then he blurts out kind of, I, that's the way I view it. Show me your glory, God. And God, God, Yahweh condescends to show this man, Moses, his glory. And he says, okay, I'm going to put you by this rock. I'm going to hide you because if you see all of me, it'll kill you. <laughs> but I'm going to pass by. And as he passes by, he declares his character. He declares who he is. And it's these very things. Uh, and he says, the Lord, the Lord, you know, Yahweh, Yahweh is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And, and Exodus adds unfaithfulness. Oh, wow. That's who our God is, brothers and sisters. You want to get blessed? To, you want to bless the Lord for something today? Bless the Lord that he is merciful, that he doesn't give us what we deserve. Sorry, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to shout again. <laughs> that he is gracious. That he gives us what we don't deserve. Simply because he's a gracious God. And that he is slow to anger. He's not Italian. <laughs> you know, aren't we thankful God doesn't smack us <laughs> as soon as we do something that's way out of his plan and will for us and disobedience. God is slow to anger. And he's also abounding, overflowing. I mean, not just a little bit, not just a lot. There's so much it flows out of him. 
He's abounding in steadfast, loyal love, in loving kindness and faithfulness, Exodus would add. Wow. We got something to bless the Lord for today. Wow. And then he, he elucidates on some of these in, in verses 9 and 10. He will not always chide. This is an interesting verse. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our, our iniquities. This is God's mercy in light of our sinfulness. And it says about this that, that not only is he merciful to us, but he doesn't chide us, uh, or some versions say accuse us. It, it literally means to bring a court case against us. Um, you know, sometimes we can forgive people <laughs> and then we can chide them <laughs> over and over, you know. It's like, well, you know, it's probably like the last time you did this, you know. This verse tells us, you know, when God forgives us, he doesn't keep chiding us about that, you know. It's forgiven. It's forgiven. <laughs> sometimes we just need to let go of that and say, yeah, it's, for it's under the blood. Ah. God isn't there saying, you know, well, you know. The last three times, <laughs> kind of chiding us about that. Ah, no, he's a forgiving because he's a merciful God. Ah. And, then, and then we have his inexhaustible, steadfast love and, and faithfulness in verses 11 and 12. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. This, this is the, the, the extent of God's steadfast earth. You know, if you can measure the heavens... <laughs> If you can measure the universe that we, we still don't know the ends of today, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's infinite to us, then you can measure the amount of God's steadfast love towards you and you and you and you and you and you and me. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Inexhaustible, steadfast love. <laughs> and if that's not enough, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. You know, his forgiveness is also inexhaustible, you know. Uh, you know, as far as the east is from the west, you, can, you can't go there, you know. Um, as far apart as it could ever be, does our transgressions, our sins get removed from us. And of course, we know as New Testament believers that happened through the cross of Christ. Can I remind you of something today, my dear brothers and sisters? You are forgiven. You are forgiven. And your forgiveness is final. Every sin, past, present, and future, is already forgiven. Yes, we have to deal with that forgiveness that affects our fellowship with the Lord. But that's not the underlying final forgiveness of God. That's that's done. We're forgiven. Uh, and that ought to be a motivation for us to praise God. He completely separates sin from the sinner. And how does he do that? He does that by forgiving us. Uh, <laughs> Not Joel. <laughs> Cut it out. Pardon me. <laughs> Today's my 40th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and uh, Christy, in her life, has put human form to steadfast love and forgiveness for me. Or I would say steadfast love and faithfulness. She shows me day after day, and week after week, and month after month, and year after year, what it means to be loved in a loyal and steadfast way that never quits, that never gives up, that stays faithful to the vow she made and the vow she made to the Lord. You cannot imagine how incredible a blessing that is to me. <laughs> and I love her for it. Because she's shown me just a little piece. She's not perfect. In fact, she's gotten feistier as we've gotten 
very long ago. <laughs> but she showed me a little picture of what God's steadfast love and faithfulness looks like. <clears throat> And then he has uh, our fatherly compassion and gentleness in verses 13 and 14. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. You know, God not only loves us, he not only forgives us, he's also a compassionate God. He has the idea of that pity, that compassion. Like a father, like a loving father who... Who, who watches out for his children, uh, you know? Uh, Kyle gave us a testimony of that a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, he, he, he is that, he, it's that kind of fatherly compassion uh, because he understands something about us. He understands how frail we are. <laughs> I love this. Uh, you know, he knows our frame. He knows how we're formed. Uh, he remembers that we are dust. Remember Genesis 2? You know, we were created out of dust. Um, you know, we're frail. <laughs> and sometimes I have to remind the Lord of that when, when the burdens seem too heavy. God, um, I'm just dust here. <laughs> You're just dealing with a man here. <laughs> um, and, and, but God never, I don't need to remind God of that. Sometimes I, I need to say that to him. But God has compassion because he understands how frail we are. Um, and he operates on that behalf. Um, and one of those things that uh, remind us of that is that life is short and transitory in verses 15 and 16. And this kind of goes, uh, it's kind of a, uh, here's the problem, here's the answer in verses 15 and 16 and then 17 and 18. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. You know, I was thinking of those flowers out front, too, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm thankful that uh, Sue mentioned that for Priscilla, because they bless me every time I come in here. But I was also thinking about flowers yesterday. You knew I was going to get bees in the sermon somehow. Um, I was down working with my bees, and, and I noticed our, our whole field was covered with this flower, and I was trying to figure out what it was, because... You know, since I became a beekeeper, one, um, Steve's brother Jeff told me, you know, you're going to start noticing when things are flowering and stuff. You're going to become very aware of that when, as a beekeeper. And, and he was right, you know. And, and um, you know, when the dandelions come, they're the first flowering of the bees. Uh, and they come and then they go. And then the white clover comes and, and the bees love that white clover. And then my locust trees bloom and, and that makes awesome honey. And and then late in the season, the goldenrod we've seen lately, and it's starting to, to, to finish up. And, and then this flower, all our field was covered with these yellow flowers, almost looked like miniature dandelions. I call them hawkweed. I looked them up, or, or rattlesnake weed, although I'm not going to eat them if I get a rattlesnake break. But, um, you know, they're a late-blooming flower. And my bees were incredibly busy yesterday. But, you know, in a week or so... They're all going to be dead. <laughs> They're all going to be gone. You know, each of those, watching those flowers come and go and how little they last is a reminder of how short life is, how transitory life is. You know, we shouldn't be living for here because it is too short and it is too transitory. But notice the contrast in verses 17 and 18. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Um, you know, here we have uh, the, the contrast between our short transitory life and God's eternal love and his what I call generational righteousness. Uh, you know, we're here for a short time. Um, and, uh, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, I was thinking about our marriage for 40 years. Really? <laughs> How did that get here? <laughs> you know, it's yesterday she was walking down the aisle and we were having kids and, you know, and boom. <laughs> 40 years. It's like, oh, we're old. <laughs> uh, you know, life goes by quick. Um, 
But long after our life here on earth is over, God's love will continue forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Isn't that a great thought? His love is eternal. Um, I like thinking about that. <laughs> and the good thing is, you know, we got to go there with each other. Um, but I also like what um, verse 18 says to those who, it says his righteousness at the end of 17 to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his uh, commandments. God's righteousness is generational to those who are obedient. Um, you know, it, it, God doesn't, you know, when he begins to work and he works in a life, that life can impact the next generation and the next generation and the next generation with God's righteousness. Uh, you know, uh, September 6th would have been my dad's 100th birthday if he had lived that long. Uh, he died about 13 years ago in 87. Um, so I was thinking about him on that day. And I was thinking about the legacy of faithfulness to God and to my mom and to us as his family that he left for all of us, you know? And that legacy of faithfulness has, has continued in my life, God willing, and, and now in the lives of our children. And now we got grandchildren and we're reading them Bible stories and excited about how God's gonna work in their life, you know? Righteousness can be a generational character trait, a spiritual trait to those who are obedient to the Lord. This is one of the blessings of obedience. When we walk with the Lord, when we abide in Christ, when we, when we keep on the path, generation after generation after generation may very well benefit from that. Huh. And then in verse 19 is kind of the, the capstone of, uh, you know, God's, uh, the general characteristic of God. Uh, I love that we talked about this already this morning. Uh, but verse 19, this is one of the great verses in the Bible on the sovereignty of God. Uh, I think it was Ken or somebody said this morning that, that uh, God is in control. Um, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. <laughs> Isn't that a great thought? There is nothing. There is no one. There is no situation. There is no person. There is no situation, there is no nation, there is nothing outside of God's control. He is sovereign all the time, forever. <laughs> that doesn't mean that in this broken world that evil has entered into and sin abounds in, that he doesn't allow evil for his good purposes. Uh, he does, we know that, but he's still sovereign over. Nothing comes, my brother and sister, into your life. Not one single thing that hasn't come through the, the fingers of a sovereign God. We don't always understand that. We don't always feel good about that. We're like, really, Lord? You know, this is too much, Lord. This is too deep. This is too hard, you know. Um, but not one thing has, has been allowed into your life by a sovereign God that didn't come through his fingers. Now, the good news is he's not just sovereign and uncaring. If we go back to verse 6, we remember that he's also good. <laughs> he is good and he's sovereign. And so nothing that comes into our, our lives through his sovereign plan and purpose is not ultimately for our good. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. Uh, it may not be good in itself. It may be very evil. It may be very hard. It may be very... Um, sinful. But God intends it, and God will use it for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. We have his promise on that. Isn't that a good thing? Uh, that's something to be thankful for. Uh, and then finally, uh, David ends this whole psalm with a call to universal praise. It's like he gets so excited about, about all that we have to to bless the Lord for. He's so passionate in his praise, uh, his forgiveness, his healing, his rescue, his reward, his satisfaction, his vigor. 
He's the righteous judge. He's completely sovereign. He's a good God. Uh, he's merciful. He loves us with a steadfast love and faithfulness, compassion and gentleness. Uh, and his love is eternal. His righteousness is generational. And so he just kind of breaks out. <laughs> it isn't enough for all of us, every human being who ever knew God, <laughs> to bless the Lord. David calls on the hosts of heaven. I love this. Bless the Lord, O oh, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word. Think of those, those worship services in heaven we talked about in Revelation, you know? The four living creatures and the elders and the angels and the mirrors upon mirrors. And David calls on them too. You got to bless the Lord with me. And we're going to bless the Lord with them someday. And he says, bless the Lord. It's so important that we bless the Lord. That every creature needs to bless the Lord. Uh -huh. And then he says, bless the Lord all his hosts. Who's his ministers who do his will. Uh -huh. You know, this could be the angels, but Deuteronomy 4.19 talks about the hosts of heaven being like the planets and, and the universe. And, and, and he's calling on the hosts of heaven, I think, and, 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 and all that God has created to bless the Lord. Uh, not that, that it's intelligent, but through their creation and through their glory and through all that we see. You know, when we see the majestic mountains, my friends just went up to Denali. They said, you, you can't even imagine how majestic it is and, 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 and all the beauty we see us and, and what's coming this fall, God says, bless the Lord, all of it. Um, and then he says, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. You know, every part of our creation, every part of the universe, every creature in it, he calls on to bless the Lord. This is everything and everyone needs to come and bless the Lord. I love it. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I bless the Lord when I'm working with my bees because they're just incredible. Ah, the more I learn about them, even though they stung me yesterday. <laughs> but finally, he calls back to us again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Are we blessing the Lord today? Ah, in our hearts of hearts, in our whole being, is all of me willing to bless all of who he is and all of what he's done for us. Brothers and sisters, Linden Bible Church, those of you listening on the Lord, uh, online, sorry, uh, let's bless the Lord today. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord tomorrow. Let's bless the Lord this week. Let's bless the Lord this month, this year. Uh, you know, Christy and I were, were talking about, you know, we felt kind of the pressure, you know, we need to make this, this, this 40th anniversary needs to be a big deal, you know? I mean, she, she put up with me for 40 years, <laughs> you know? You know, we got to make this a big deal, and we were both feeling that pressure, I think, and, you know, what are we doing? Well, we're busy all day ministering today and, and doing the usual, you know? And, and, uh, and so, you know, being the much more flexible one in our relationship and thinking outside the box, she said, let's not just make it a day. Let's take the pressure off. Let's just make this 40th year our year of celebrating 40 years together. I said, oh, I like that. You know, that gives us all year to celebrate. You know, we have all year to celebrate the Lord today. Uh, we have all year. We have all of life to celebrate the Lord today. So man, let's do that together. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that today you will inspire our hearts to bless you. For, for who you are and for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Not to do it. <laughs>
that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory. to be with you. Praise you now in vain. 
you are dismissed.